‫אוהב. ‫מסכס בובי קאמה, דף סמך בובה עמוד א', ‫we are, we are in מרובה, ‫yes, we're doing it. ‫עכשיו, line starts with the word עכשיו. ‫אומר רבה, רבה סז, רבה סז, ‫שינוי קוינה, ‫we said a few times already before, ‫that when a גנב steals something, ‫he does קיני אנד זיילה, ‫in other words, the, the, it's in his hand, I won't say legally, but according to Aloha, it's now acquired to him as a Ganev, which means now the transaction was made that it's halachically in his hands. Of course, he has to return it. Once there's a Shinui, Shinui meaning once change happened to the Chetetz, change happened to the stolen goods, and we're going to see that all types of changes. Yeah, there are different types of changes. The Shinui Rashut, Shinui, all kinds, yeah? Shinui Hashem, Shinui Maise, all kinds of changes. So if change happens to the chayfetz, to the object, then it belongs to the ganev, and all he has to give back is the money. The money is worth and not the actual object. That's the Kiddush. How do we know that? That he has to give the cash back and not give back the actual item. Shinoi koine, what's the source for that? Siva vet nina, it's written in the Torah, and it's also, tnina, it's also written in the Mishnah. Siva, it says in the Teireh, as I told you many times, he shall return the item, the stolen item that he stole. Yeah, that seems to be redundant. Gzela obviously means that he stole it. It already says Gzela Asher Gozal. Don't tell me surely, you know, you know, surely. Gzela Asher Gozal, the stolen good that he stole. Matal Mudlom Asher Gozal. What does it mean that he stole it? What is it coming to teach me? Taflamid, Talmud Loimar. What is it coming to tell me? Shogozal. Im ke'ein, shogozal yachzir. If the object is the same ke'ein, looks the same, is the same, yeah, all the same as when he stole it, it's now in the same condition as when he stole it, yachzir. He should give back the very same thing. They love, but if not, if there was significant change, whatever that is, there was real change, then domim be'alma boy shlumi. Then all he has to give is domim money, cash, or maybe check. Boy <coughs> shlumi. He has to pay, which means now we understand the words. Hagzela asher gozal, the same stolen item that you stole. Meaning, in the condition, in the state that you stole it, that way you have to give it back now, whether it's a day later or ten years later. But if there was a change then, as we're going to see soon, then you don't have to give back the, the existing one, the post-change one. You have to just give back the cash that has e either the value when you stole it or the value that it's worth now. That's a different discussion we had yesterday. Tnina, well, Rabbi promised us, Rabbi told us there are two sources, from the Torah and also from the Mishnah. Tnina, we see a Mishnah, which is the opening Mishnah of the following Prokim of the ninth Barak. A goizel eitzim. Yeah, or either a ninth or ten. A goizel eats him, the person who stole wood. Vason <clears throat> kelim. That's the classical example which I kept telling you. Vason kelim. He took pieces of wood, logs of wood, whatever, plywood, whatever that was. Vason kelim. He himself, the kind of very artistic, you know, very creative kind of guy. He made them. He's creative on all 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 fronts, you know. Vason <laughs> kelim. He made them into kelim into. Furniture, whatever, dishes, furniture, he made them into a whole new thing. Semel, or he stole raw wool, just wool. Vason, begodim. And then he made it into a nice uh, begodim garment. He turned the wool. That's a lot of work. From wool, he has to you know, clean it, spin it. He has to weave it. Then he has to make a baguette, the hardworking guy. Sason, begodim. Meshalem, kishasak, zeila. Then he has to pay, like shasak, zeila. He has to pay like the original item, which means he doesn't have to give you back the baguette. By the way, even if he gave you back the baguette, let's say you, your, the, you, the wool was stolen from you, and he gives you back a garment, you'd have to pay him change, by the way, because the garment is really worth more. That's time stamp besides the fact, yeah? But he doesn't have to give you back the baguette, he has to give you back wool. Well, the wool is not there. The wool is already uh, in a sweater, beautiful sweater now that was woven, that was knitted. One second, I'll soon out here, yeah, yeah, one minute. So you don't have to pay him the baguette, you have to give him cash for however much the wool was worth. Wool's worth, the wool was worth, I don't know, 500 shekels. He has to give you 500 shekels cash 
and the garment stays is. Yes, Jeff, I repeat what I said. Yes, let's say the wool, let's say the halacha would not be like that. Let's say that would come this morning and we would not hear the holy words of Rabbah. Let's say the change would not be koina. You tell me what would be the right thing to do. Let's say Shini would not would have not been koina. Then I would say, and I think I'm right, that if you stole 500 shekels worth of wool, and now you made a thousand five hundred beautiful suit from wool, yeah, then what? Of course, you'd have to give back. Let's say you'd have to give back the suit. He'd have to give you a change of a thousand shekels, because why should why should the guy have pay more, much more than what he stole? Forget about kefel. That's a different cheshbon. Right? I think change would have been paid. I think it says it somewhere also later on, but that's that's besides the point. Let's not talk about ifs and would have been. This more is, you know, it's actually not a difficult more today. Today is relatively easy for Maruba, but I'm saying, why should he pay more than he stole? He stole 500. Should he give him a beautiful, uh, he works for Gucci. He gives him a Gucci suit of, I don't know, $2,000. Why? You'd have to give back the change, but even that we don't say. All he has to do is give you cash for 500 shekels because that's what he stole. What about this? The suit stays is ah, he made money. He made money. Be bargain to the gun. Yeah. Sorry, he had his finger on for. Can you just speak a little bit louder? Inami, another source to tell me that change actually sort of acquires it. The person acquires things through shinui. There's another halacha, nothing to do with Xela. That's called Reishis Agez. Reishis Agez means a Kohen has how many things do the Kohenim get from the Yidalach? Bain Tikwa or 24. Very good. So one of those things are Reishis Agez. If a person has five sheep, yeah, and a full of wool, now he has to give the Reishis Agez the first, um, however you call it, the first uh, bunch, no, the mm, of the shearing, the first uh, bunch, whatever, of shearing, yeah. Yeah, he holds the shearing and this kemish chalchamish sloin, five sloin. He has to give that to the koyan. Okay, very nice. Now, as opposed to gzela, a koyan, there's no one koyan says Rashi they can actually claim it. No, oh, a koyan, here came the koyan. The koyan, you can sit here, you can sit uh, maybe where, or maybe here, parents didn't come for a few days, so sit the, or whatever. Sure yeah. What happens if a koyan now wants the, the, the shorn sheep? The, the wool, then he deserves the wool, but no one coin can claim that it's his. Me, as Israel, I'm hive to give it to whichever coin would demand it of me. So now, says the Gemara, Inami, we now bring another source from Hulin. In Hulin, one of the last prokim, if not the last one, it's called Reshis Agez. Let's say the person has that piece of wool in his hand. He intended to give it to the coin. And then he painted it, he dyed it. That's how you say it, yeah? He dyed it, it was white, like wool. Now he dyed it uh, shocking pink or purple or black or blue, I don't know what. Potu, he's now Potu, he's exempt. He doesn't have to give it to the coin. He gets to keep it, yeah? He gets to keep it completely. Why is that? Why does he get to keep it? Alma, that is to say, Shinui koine. You see that it changes koine. You see, not only by Gizela, here, there is something that belongs to the Shevet Kohanim in general, but because what I have to give them is the original Tzemer. Now the Tzemer is completely changed in a way that's irreparable, irrevocable, is now different. So this Tzemer is not something I owe the Kohanim. Mimela, I can keep it. Says this is also as opposed to Meiser. Meiser, I can't eat Truma, let's say, to be uh, more exact. I'm not allowed to eat. If somebody eats Truma, the Tzemer is not as heilig as the Truma, and the person can actually be coined it. I mean, he lost because he lost the mitzvah to say of giving to the coin. So he's a loser. But mitzah, the financial part of it, if he thinks he's gaining, the mice, the change in the tzemer is significant. It will not be, you know, cannot be revoked. And therefore, we say that the tzemer belongs to the Jew and the, to the Israel, and the koyanim cannot claim it, especially here. There's no one coin that can actually claim it back. Now, so we saw sources in general that tell me that Shinui is koine. Now we come to the next stage. Now we come to a whole new idea, which I hinted to before, and that is called Yush. Yush, welcome. Here we come. Yush, it's the last line of the line starts with the word ad, kosher ad. Yush, what's Yush? Yush, how do you explain, how do you translate Yush? Give up hope, giving up hope. 
to forsake. Okay, good. To spare. To spare or despair? What? Despair. Despair. Okay, say there. The kids are, excuse my simple English, <laughs> if somebody gave up hope on owning something, which means, Yish means, says Rashi in Elu Metzias, those of you who learned Elu Metzias with yourselves or with your 10 years old son, Yoak, very good. If a person says, oh, woe to me, Leches on Kis, oy vey, what a loss. The person is uh, heard saying, I lost this and that, and that's it, I gave up hope. Yeah, whoa, the chesron kiss, oy vavoy, oh, there's chesron kiss, there's financial loss. And then that's called the person who was meyayish. The person, the, the owner gave up hope owning the object. I just want to clear, and unfortunately, I didn't find it yesterday, that the mechlekes between the ketois and the nesivas, two very, very, very famous proportion, which I mentioned a lot here in the Shulchan Aruch, there's a difference between yush and hefkel. What's the difference between yush and hefkel? Hefkel is to disown, yeah? And Yush is well, for sake, whatever, all the other things. The difference is as follows. Unless you want to give the answer. What's the difference between a person who declared and he said in front of three people, here is my phone and I must carry it in front of three people. It's not mine anymore. He's not following my ways. I disown him. <laughs> this is not my phone anymore. Or if a person says, oh, I, say, I lost my phone. Because in both cases, we say Begdal. We say in both cases that you're allowed to take the object. Hefkel can take the object, but Yush also. Yush, let's say I found an object, which is telling you the basic halacha, which I'm sure you know. If a person, let's say, was, was heard saying, I lost, let's say, money. Money has no simon. Money, there's no cash that has no uh, simon. There's no uh, way to, no significant, uh, not symbol. How do you say simon? Uh, no, not symbol. Sign, sign. There's no sign to define, no identifying sign. The person said, oh, I lost 100 shekels, and he, that's it. And I found the 100 shekels. If I'm nice and I know who the owner is, I may have to give it back to him, but I don't really have to give back the 100 shekels because he gave up hope. And if a person said about the 100 shekels, 100 shekels, hefkel, I'm a generous guy, not giving it to anybody in particular, I'm just declaring 100 shekel or hefkel, I can also take it. What's the difference between Yish and hefkel? Lahaloche. In, in philosophy and in aloche lamaisa, yes, peanut gallery, hit, hit it. <clears throat> yeah. Ten, uh, uh, a clear difference between Hefker and Yush. What happens if I, me, let's say I was mafkir something, now I want to use it again. I want to use it again. I want to reown it. Let's say I was meyash from something and then I found it. I, ah, my favorite hundred shekels, which was meyash, looked all over and it says, I gave up, I gave up, up and I found it. By Hefkel, if I want to re-own it, I have to make a new Kenyan, Be reacquire. Thank you very much. In other words, if I have Hefkel, Hefkel now belongs to nobody, including Akhenat Eichtel. Therefore, once I was Mafkir the phone, that phone belongs to me as, as much as it belongs to you. If I want to be Koine, I have to reacquire it and do a new, whole new Kenyan. Yush, I don't have to do a new Kenyan. But Yush, I wasn't really Mafkir consciously. It's just circumstances. Once I realized again, oh, here's on the shekels, mazel tov. I don't have to be to acquire it again because by etzem, the whole thing was a mistake to begin with. If and I can the interim between my yush and my findings, somebody somebody else found it, he can keep it. Finders keepers. By sheinken, by hefker, no hefker. It's completely not mine. Yush is not mine as long as nothing else happens. As long as I'm not aware of the existence of the object. Once I am aware of it, and they the use can be revoked, and now I'm the owner without reacquiring it again. I'm not sure if it's a choice or the Nesivas, but that's definitely something in the Mephoshim. Now let's just talk about Yush. Yush, Amri Rabonon Denikni. The word Rabonon in the Sugiya takes two different uh, translations. Yush, the line starts with the word Amri. Amri Rabonon Denikni. Rabonon means the rabbis, the people in Yeshiva, the Yeshiva Shevelt in the times of the Gemara. We know that Rabonon say, that Yush is koine, which means, let's say a Ganev stole, he did a Kenyan, Agba, Shicha, Chotzer, he did a legal, so to speak, Kenyan, now it's in his possession, he has to give it back. Ganev, Deshiva Sikzel HaShon Gozal. Once the person is Miyayish, once he knows that the person said, I'm looking all over for it, <laughs> he doesn't know it's with me. <laughs> He's looking all over and he said, oh, vital cheson kiss, he said, I gave up hope. He posted on the internet, I gave up hope. 
know the email list, then the person can keep it, the item. All he has to give back is cash. You can ask why. Because here we still have the same Xela Shor Gozal. We're not going to learn this verse. I'm telling you now. I'm not going to tell you today the why. Why is Yush Koine? Why it's not Koine? We're first going to get all the facts together in Eretz Hashem. And by tomorrow, we're going to go into why would Yush be Koine or not. First, let's get the facts and then the, go deeper. But basically, Rabbanon said that if not everyone agrees to that, there were such talk in Rabbanon's circles that Yush is Koine. Again, the God of heard. The person gave up hope. Oh, the God of keeps the item. And all he's given back is the cash of the original item. <clears throat> so the world, no, it's not, it's not an official <clears throat> thing. We know it was Meash. I heard him saying it to himself. No, he said it to the four walls. He was saying he's his is a breast liver. And he said, oh, Hashem, tate, tate, vaila leches on kiss. And I'm the Ganev. I was, I was the other breast liver. I was uh, behind the tree over there. And I heard him saying vaila leches on kiss. So now I can keep the item and give him cash. I make it as if it fell from Shamayim. Ah, the cash that he lost. Baruch Hashem. Now, Mew, however, Loyad Inan, we don't know, we don't know if Yush being Koine, is it a Din Doraisa or a Din Dorabonon? Now the word Dorabonon means Dorabonon, as opposed to Doraisa, meaning that the rabbis tell us that Yush is Koine. It's like the second stage, which is equivalent to Shinui, right? The fact that Yush is like the second stage, which puts it in the hands of the Ghana forever. I don't know if that halacha stems from the Rabbonon or from the Oraisa. Meaning, what is it sad to say it's the Oraisa? We're going to have three sides now. Either it's the Oraisa, one second, or it's just Rabbonon who established it for some reason, or Yush is not coined at all. We'll see a third opinion that says the Yush is not coined. But let's see one by one something quick. <laughs> no, it's not Sophic Doraisa. We don't know if it is a Din Doraisa. Then we can talk about the second thing. We don't even know Doraisa Dorabonon. Many times, many halachas people don't know Doraisa Dorabonon. Shmita nowadays, Doraisa Dorabonon. It's not so simple. Chagoni uh, says, if not Dorabonon, it's like a Doraisa. Um, lots of things. Purim is the shadow of Doraisa Dorabonon. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Sphere Soimer. We don't know. Is this Dorabonon or Doraisa? Uh, quickie, focus narrows. Uh, yeah. I told you I will not tell you the reason, but we can start understand the reason by ourselves. I would say the issue of Xela or Gozal is only if there is a person claiming the Xela. If the person was Meyash, which means he does not claiming back anymore. If there's no uh, no claim, no plaintiff, nobody claiming the actual object, I don't have to give it back because he's not interested in that anymore. I is misguided, misguided, misguided. Lamaisa, he's not interested because he doesn't want it anymore. Give up, open it. And Mimela, I can keep it. I, I'm just saying a general sboro, I can agree, disagree, just something to, you know, whatever, to satisfy your, your hunger for a few, for the next few minutes. But the value I have to give him back. Of course, I have to give the value. A guy never has to give back. Even, by the way, Baruch, even a person who legally acquires something has to pay. You may get something from a shop and the guy trusts you, gives you on credit. Of course, you have to give him back the, the money. Money always have to give back. It's called momni gabov, which I told you many times before. My money is, but you have to give it back to me, whether you're a guy, never an honest guy, or or friends, uh, socks. Well, it does make a difference. Yes. Quick, 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 quick. What? That, that's what you're saying. Maybe Rav Yosef is your friend. We'll see later. But that's a pleasure. I could say no. Maybe Veshiv is where there's somewhere to return to. There's no home to return. Okay, I told you to General Sboro, and I did not want to start a discussion now, but I like what you're saying. It has to be yeah, it's it's yeah we're trying to make an equivalent to Shinu. Shinu wants to have a new friend. Shinu has a brother. His name is Yush. Now, why should we say it's the rice of the Rabbonum? Midi, like, the Hava Moitza Veda. The Tzad, now we are investigating the side that it's the Raisa. We want to compare it to Moitza Veda, a person who found a lost object. Moitza Veda, a person who found a lost object, and he, before he found it, before he picked it off the floor in Park I alone, he already heard the person saying, Vailel Cheswam Kis, or says to Isfes, the item has no semen, the item has no, uh, no uh, sign in it, whatever, like cash or something, uh, a loaf of bread, like 100 other loaves of bread, or all, they all look the same, or says Rash, excuse me, Rashi says the circumstances were such that any person 
that lost it would have been miyash. For example, let's say something fell into a river. The river, a real gushing river, yeah, like in America, like the big, big rivers. The person, something fell into the river, and goodbye. That river in a few minutes, it's gonna be very, very far away. You put it in the garbage. Now it's already in, I don't know, near Bnei Brak in Chiria. It's already in a place of no return. And therefore people always miyash when, when these are the circumstances of the loss. Okay, and then you found it. You found a golden, it happens a lot, that was told, you, you, in the, the main uh, garbage dump far away from the Chemish, wherever that is, yeah, the person finds a diamond ring. He can keep it because if it's in the garbage, right, and it's so far away from the person, anybody who knows that the garbage truck already, yeah, already uh, cleared it away, cleared it out, is Mayash, so I can keep the diamond ring. I know you see you know your stuff. Because the moro, who's moro, the owner, is meyash from it, before it came into the hands of the keeper, of the, excuse me, of the finder, I'm the finder, I found it and I know that it was meyash before, I found it in the garbage truck in Bnei Brak, the guy lives in Dimona, far away, he for sure was meyash, no question. Kanile, he acquires it, I'm allowed to pick it up, Diamond ring, darling. He won't tell his wife he found it in the garbage. I went to the jeweler and I found this nice, yeah. Kanile, okay, anniversary. Hi, Nami. Here, too, in the case of Geneva, came the Miyai Shmara, Kanile. Here, too, I would say, if you, when Aveda, the Torah, the Torah, when it comes to Aveda, the Torah says, no, maybe you remember the Posuk, Ashotoivat Mimenu. The Torah says, you know what kind of Aveda you have to give back? And evaded that was lost from him, from the owner. Obviously, it was lost by the owner, not by uh, Prince of Ela. Says the Gemara in Elu Metzias, "Tovad mimenu ve'loy mikol odom." But other people would find it. But if he lost it and everybody else lost it, meaning it's completely lost because it's on the other side of the river of the Amazonas or in the garbage truck or far away, it's not his loss. It's a loss. From everybody in the area, it's complete loss. Everyone will be miyash. I don't have to give it back. Oh, so when it comes to Aveda, the Torah recognizes the yush means anything happening post yush is already that's it. I don't have to give it back. I don't have. To, I can pick it up, and it's my diamond ring, darling. Yeah, Elamai. Maybe here also I would say, but the yush of the Ganav, the Ganav is not a nice guy. No shidduch for my daughter is a terrible person. Da 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 da. But Lamaisa, it came to his hands. It came to his hands. And now I would say once you, Shmum, he's <laughs> the beautiful words, Vailal Chesel Kiss were sounded four days after he keeps it in his backyard. Yush is Yush, Alma, Kani. So I would say he acquires it. He acquires it. That's one side to say the Yush, regardless of the outside conditions, Yush is Yush. In a way, Yush is, and I'm biting my tongue here, is like Hefker. As I said, it's not exactly like Hefker. The tzad here, if I remember correctly from learning this, I think 30 years ago, I think the tzad in Gemara is that yush is yush. Osh katan, yush means when he says vayal ches on kis, tomarnu. I just want to point out, and thank you for uh, for holding yourself back. I just want to point out, and Toysa says that, and I don't want to mislead you. Toysa points out, I'm not saying it's inside now, by a Veda, it's different. Let's say I found an object, a diamond ring in Nachal alone, not in the garbage dump in the Sheva. Yeah, I found it in Nachal alone, a diamond ring, and that's not huge. It's very clear in the shape of a duck. I don't know, something very particular. Of course, obviously, I'm an honest guy. I will I'll try and give it back. Then I heard a lady saying to her friend walking uh, down the street, I, I lost a diamond ring shaped like a duck. I gave up on it. I'm never going to find it again. <laughs> and the whole advertising thing, even an email list, she posts, oh, there, a lot. I gave up hope. Oh, I'm a yash, a shivish woman. I'm Miyai, she says. So then can I keep it? And I say, darling, no. Why? If it came to my hands at the beginning, I had a chiyuv, a shavas because when I originally found it, she was looking for it, yeah? Then that chiyuv doesn't change, because I'm already positioned, so to speak, in a matzav of chiyuv, a shavas that doesn't change. But Schenken by Ganev, we want to say no. A Ganev, we're trying to say that even though it came to his hands, the isu, but because we have the concept of Veshev, was Zela Shal Gozal, and now there's no claim, maybe, there's such a thing to say, Yush is Yush. Excuse me, let me just say the other side, and then I'll promise I'll hear you. Or maybe, now comes the obvious, 
obvious other side that says, Ma pitom, loy, chas v'sholem, lo dami la aveda. How do you compare to aveda? Aveda hu dechiyasoy liyodei betera. Chas yo, liyodei. Aveda came to his hands in a, in a way that's okay, that's allowed, hetero, in a way that is kosher and permitted. He came to my hands. I'm an honest guy. Why? Because he was meyash before I picked it up. There was Yush. I heard the lady screaming, Yush, Yush, Vailul Cheson, Kis, Yush, Yush. And then I picked up the diamond ring. Then I can keep it. Aval Hai, the case of the Ganav, is not the same. Came to be Sua Soiloyode. The Ganav, obviously, by definition, <laughs> it came to his hands in a forbidden way. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a Ganav, yeah? It came to his hands, the the Easter. And then the Yush take place. No, my friend, like Aveda, if Yush took place after it's in your hands, especially the Isu, your Ganav, of course, you should not work with the Oraisa. You can't compare it to Aveda. So Yush works maybe only for Aveda, but for really for Gneva, it doesn't work. I, so why did Rabbanan say the Yush does work for Ganav? In the Rabbanan who, Omer Rabbanan, Niknim Pneta Konas Shovim. Welcome to the Konas Shovim. The side, this side wants to say, Rabbanan are sometimes being nice to the Ganev. Rabbanan are like the nice social worker. Rabbanan say there's Takona Sashovim. That is something which Shlomo mentioned on the first day, if I'm not mistaken. Takona Sashovim means Chachomim want uh, the Ganev to admit and, you know, how do you say, come out with it? Yeah, step up and admit. Come clean. That's a good word. Thank you. They want him to come clean and therefore they make a Takona, an establishment for him, a rule for the Ganev. A shovim, what shovim? Those who do tshuva. A ganav would not do tshuva if he knows he has to give back the actual item because he wants to keep the item. So let's say the person was meyash. The ganav says, ah, oh, he was meyash already. I don't want to give him back anything at all. So Chachamim say, listen, darling, we understand you had a difficult childhood. I'm joking, yeah? And what? And now instead of giving back the actual item, since you sh- does make some difference, not, not completely like a veda, but makes some difference, the original person is not as anxious already. I'm being a bit balabatish, but like, yeah, there's already a certain stage of no via, no claim. Mimela, at least give back the cash and you get to keep the original thing because otherwise you wouldn't have returned anything. Rashi says, not, I'm saying you do have to read Rashi here. Rashi doesn't say the words I would think. Look at the Rashi in the second to last Rashi in the page, almost at the end of the page. The God of himself, he may have a lot of, he has a lot of stolen goods in his backyard. Now for him, it's hard to actually to go back and start going to the hassle of finding the actual gzela, right? So we say, the guy says, oh, you have to start looking for the gzela. I want to return it. It's too much of a hassle. I have so many things in my house. And this stolen item, he has 500 diamond rings. Some of them may be acquired legally, but some of it is stolen. To start looking for the gzela is too much for him. We're trying to accommodate for the to get to the Ganav, and we say <coughs> once there's Yush, at least you give back the cash and you can keep the actual item because it may be hard for you to acquire it. So Lamaisa, and thank you for your patience again. Baruch is definitely the first in line. Basically, we have two tzadim. Either Yush is Yush, once is Yush, Midoraisa. Midoraisa Yush is koine, and therefore Eshiv is Gazash or Gazal, nobody to return to, he's not interested in it. It's true that there's an emotional state, but he's not claiming it anymore. So I will not give it back to him. I'll give that cash, not the item. The other side says, no, mister. He came to your hand, but yes, sir, unlike Aveda, you stole it. And that caused the huge. You're the bad boy here. And therefore, Midoraisa, you're not suppo- you are supposed to give it back to Oraisa, the original thing. Rabbanon are being nice to you. They make the konas shavim, And therefore, you can keep the item as long as you come clean, as you say nicely, and you give the cash. These are the two tzadim, the rice of the Rabbonam. There's a third one, but I will uh, relieve Baruch from his uh, question. Yes, continue. Yosef uh, Omar, Samech, Vov, Amud Aleph, the bottom of the page of Yosef Omar, Yush, Eina, Koine, Vapil, Amud Rabbonon. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Says of Yosef, Yush is not Koine, even with the Rabbonon. I almost wanted to say it's not Koine at all, but it's not true. We're going to see later what happens when there's a Shirach of Yush and Shinui. Let's leave that for later. Right now, all we know is Rav Yosef says Yush is not koine. In the Havamina right now, tomorrow we think that Rav Yosef says Yush is never koine, not even with the Rabbanon. So if the person stole something 
and he heard that the person says, oh, that's it, it will never be mine anymore, the beautiful bulldog, my friend. So then he can not keep it, you have to give the original dog, the hule, and even with the Rabbonon. That's what Rabbi Yosef says. In other words, Yush doesn't work. I'm, as you notice, I'm limiting the words here because soon we'll see Rabbi Yosef is, has exceptions to the rule. But generally speaking, Rav Yosef is supposed to Abba. Rav Yosef wants to say you should not coin it. Now it's going to be a whole yeah wrestling, Torah wrestling between Rav Yosef and Rabba whether you should coin it or not coin it. Ace Rav Yosef le Rabba. Basically, Rav Yosef is very easy to understand. But Doraisa, you should coin it only where in Aveda. Xela, you're a bad boy. No use for you. It came to your hands by Isser, and the use doesn't change. The fact you have to give it back. Yush is not enough of an antidote to Beheshiv. Like you were saying, Beheshiv is still there. It's the same object, and you, very nice, Shmuel Shlomo said actually a very nice thing. You, as a Ganev, you have to give back Beheshiv. Whether he's Miyash or not Miyash, none of your business. Beheshiv is a din in the Ganev. You have to give back to the original owner. I, Chachomim, are nice to you? They're not nice to you. No, <laughs> I'm sorry. You're Ganev, give it back. It will take you five days to look through all your stolen stuff. Good for you. Spend five days and give him back the original object. That's it. In other words, Rabbi Yosef says, the Raisa no, the Rabbana, no. So you have to give back, even though the person is Miyash. That's the basic Rabbi Yosef. Eisver Rabbi Yosef le Rabba. Now Rabbi Yosef is attacking Rabba. Rabbi Yosef that claims Yush is not Koina is now asking on Rabba that says he does. Gozal Chometz Vavarol of Pesach. A person, we had that case before in the Masechta, a person stole a very, very nice box of cookies, a chomet sticker cookies, the overall of a Pesach. He always had in mind to give it back. He stole it before Pesach. Actually, a person would be very happy if he stole it before Pesach, the, the box of cookies. Yeah, he's collaborating with his wife. So, <laughs> whiskey. Gozal chomet's overall of a Pesach. Now it's post Pesach. Now, what do you do? Oimer loy harei shel cholofonecho. The Ganev can tell the victim Take back your box of cookies. Excuse me. Lamai said, now these box of cookies are worth how much? Zero. I told you, one of the shops here, they have like a four tiny, four or six baby cookies for 20 something shekels, yeah? In a certain shop, they're, they're in, imported from Holland. So that I never buy them for some reason, yeah? So now, I'm not sure why. So now, let's say you stole those box of cookies worth 25 shekels. After Pesach, how much are they worth? Zero times zero equals zero. It's Isra no, of course. It was Isra no. Now Chometz Rabba Lava Pesach Gamanu Areshel, and he can still tell him, "Here's a box of cookies. Take it back." Instead of saying, "I'll, I'll compensate you with cash," he can give him back the box of cookies. Why is that? Because we say, says Rashi, look in Rashi, Omer Lo Lanigzal, the first Rashi on the left hand side in the page, Areshel Cholafanecho Bein Kmois Shehu, as it is. The Hezek Sheno Niko, who ah, we're entering, we're not entering the Sugi actually. It's part of the Sugi of Hezek Sheno Niko. Hezek Sheno Niko means an invisible Hezek. In other words, if you don't look in halachic eyes, if you invite Tim McKenzie to be the judge here, he would say, well, that looks like very nice jar of cookies. That looks very nice and fresh to me. Like, ah, oh, it's been a month ago, but it's still very nice cookies. They're really crunchy. Okay, in other words, in, in, in non halachic eyes, Invisible Nezek, really, it doesn't look different or smell different or less quality. Because it's Nezek She'eno Nika, invisible Nezek, the big, 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 big Mechloikis in Gitin, in the middle of the Masechta there. And here we pass you on Hezek She'eno Nika, Loish Mehezek. The fact that the value is not there anymore because of side reasons, halachically, like Tuma, Pasharas, Mechule, doesn't make a difference. That's not the sugya right now, but this is what this opinion says. In any event, wait a second. Okay, this is all very nice, but what about Yush? The high, this guy came in the matter Eden Isura because the time of the Isur of Pesach came. Let's say this person bought, oh, I got it for Purim. You got a Shalach Manus for Purim? Wow, these Dutch cookies, 25 shekels, like gold. I find, finally got them for Shalach Manus, so happy. Put them in the, in the, where? In the larder. And now it was stolen. He's looking and looking and looking. Before Pesach came, of course he's Miyash, because <laughs> even if he'll find them, there's nothing to do with them. He's an Orthodox Jew. What will he do with the cookies on Pesach? So regardless of anything else, Halacha makes him obviously be Miyash as he's checking the Chomets. And yet, if you want to tell me Yush is Koina by itself, without any Shinuim, you, Rabbi, you want to tell me Yush alone, 
acquires it to the Ganev, Amai Omer Lo Reshel Cholofanecho. Why is he telling him it's yours? Domi Me'ali Bay Shnumile. He should have paid him cash. Why? Because really, the Ganev acquired it at the time of use. If the Ganev acquired the cookies, it's more Mechai of him. Anybody who's against the Ganev should be happy here. Look what's going on here. A huge twist in the tale. I'll repeat the question. I'm not sure everyone got it. Again, if the person, the Ganev, Rak Rega Tzavakasha, Rak Rega Tzavakasha, if the person stole the cookies, and it's almost Pesach, which means the other Shomer, uh, Shomer Pesach Jew is Meyayish, at that very second, boom, here comes a new glow. Now he's coined the cookies, right? He's, the guy is coined the cookies. Once he bought them, he has to pay for them. So in other words, the fact he's coined means he's got to pay cash. So why are you telling me that now after Pesach, he gives back the original cookies? No, the original cookies, I'm not mechuyev to give anymore because it was huge. Post Yush, the cookies stay by the Ganev, and he has nothing to do with them, because the Shomer Pesach, and now the cash is should be given him, because he begged Ke'ilu bought them before Pesach at the time of Yush. The reason I'm excited is, because everybody here thinks that the fact that Ganev is koine is something to the benefit of the Ganev. Here we see just the other way around. Here being koine is not for your benefit. If he stays with the cookies and the cookies throughout Purim, Pesach, Yom Atzomus, everything, they stay all the time, but the owner, and it's in the Ganev's possession, but the owned by the original owner, then the Ganev can say, take back the cookies, they're yours. I never really was kind of them. They're yours. Ah, you can't eat them? Tough luck, Tim McKenzie. No, I don't care. But Sheink, and if you say that he acquired them through use, that means it's more Mechuyev, because he bought them when they were still kosher, a few minutes before Pesach, right? And now he has to give cash for what he bought. Get me? So you see, sometimes being coined is actually more Mechayev they're not being coined, and we are in North Korea soon. Omar Lay, a few minutes, a few minutes. Omar Lay, so you see, Rabbi Yosef says, you see, you, she's not kind, it says Rabbi Yosef. You see that I'm right. Omar Lay, oh, now says Rabba, ki kamina no, zemisyash with the oitzel liknois. Says Rabba, I'm also limiting my words. When I said you, she's koine, that is to say, when the Balabais, the original victim is Miyash, and the Ganev wants to acquire it. Then Kenyan works. How can I acquire something against my will? Right? No such thing. I'm not talking about the Bekfia. But let's say I'm not interested in buying something. It's not mine. Hi, Zemisyash was the Enoitzalik noise. This Ganev is a very frum Jew. Like many Ganovim, he keeps kosher. It's not just part of the jokes about Yeshiva life. It's also Gemarin of Adizoro and Ibaba Basra. Ganovim, they're Ganovim, but they keep kosher. So therefore, because this guy only eats the dots, the Haredis from Pesach, and he doesn't eat anything, but he's a Ganev, yeah, Mimela, he's not interested in acquiring the box of cookies. Mimela is not koine. <laughs> Mimela, it stays, he's not using his rights or being koine through Yush. He has the option, he didn't use the option, right? Mimela, what? Mimela, we say that the box of cookies throughout Pesach remains the original owner, and he give him back the original box of cookies. Ah, it's worth zero. That is number one. Because after Pesach, because why is it worth zero? Because Chometz the Pesach also no. He cannot sell it to Tim McKenzie and not to Abdul Abu Rahman and not to Chun Chun Chun. You can't even feed it to your dog. If you're a dog owner, you have to make sure that the dog eats for Pesach. Seriously. What Matona has to do with anything? I'm always. I'm stopping now in order to relate to something you said. You should know, and you're going to see it soon, by the way, but it, I'm just giving you a domo. Let's say someone stole, Reuven stole Shimon's something, you name it. He stole his, uh, his tea, his cup, his phone, his uh, shoes. Then, as long as it's in the domain, domain, not ownership, it's in the Ganev's house, it's out of my control. I don't know where it is, or the Ganev is a tough guy. It's out of my actual control right now because it's been stolen. I cannot sell it to anybody, and I cannot be makdish to base a mikdash. Because in order to sell, or in order to be, especially to be makdish to base mikdash, to dedicate to base mikdash, it has to be under my <coughs> possession and my control. Bishaloi ubil shusoi. Neither the Ganev can. The Ganev, as long as there was no Kenyan, real Kenyan, final Kenyan Zela, which is Kenyan and, and, and Shinui, he cannot do anything either. In other words, as long as it's in the Ganev's Kenyan and not by me, it's like an in-between matzav. Nobody really controls the object. We'll discuss it later, okay? So you can sell it to a good. 
I think he was first. And, oh, go ahead, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, hey, Sreddoyle Rabbe. Weiter, weiter, weiter. Abai asks Rabbe. Again, Rabbe is the one who says that Yush is Koile. It says in the Torah at the beginning of Baikra, with the third postdoc in Baikra, Korbo Noi. It says if a man brings his Korban, well, obviously, if you bring a Korban, it belongs to you. What does it come to tell me? His Korban. The Loi Hagozul. We have one of the many droshes. You're not allowed to bring a stolen Korban to Beis Amikdash. Superficially speaking, we understand you stole an animal, you bring it to Hashem. Hello, this is like the Zoina and her money, you know, like uh, <laughs> a little bit of text over here. You're the God of don't bring it to Beis Amikdash. Yeah. However, it's not so simple. It's not so simple. Echidami, exactly what is the case, tell me please, that you stole an animal, and Havamina is, before we continue, to save you a lot of trouble, in the Havamina, the Gemara understands at this stage, you stole a regular animal, that was a regular chulin animal, secular, so to speak, and you got it when you stole it, but you're very religious, very religious. When we get Corbin to base a mikdash, so you took the animal that was stolen from Yenna, your makdish to base a mikdash, your meyayitz with all the choshva to me the chachomim, how to be makdish, must chumer dik away, makdish. Yeah, my stolen animal. Ah, oh, oh, you makdish it, you makdish to base a mikdash, and then you go to the mikveh, shem es kedoshim, and then what? You go to base a mikdash with the korban. So that says the the Torah. Sorry, Mister, if your animal was originally stolen and then mukdash, that ain't working. That korban is possible from some odd reason. Let me ask a question, says the Gemara, asks Abaye to Rabba. What did the Rabba say? Yush is koine, right? And at this stage, we think Yush is koine. In other words, once I stole the animal and the owner says, oi, va, voi, va, voi, it's not mine anymore, I, I gave up hope, then it completely belongs to the Ganev. You only have to give cash. Echidami, what's the story Rabba asks Abaye, he's telling me. Ile malifne Yush. If he stole it, and he was makdishit before the yush. In other words, if the a person was makdish an animal, the akdosha on Sunday he stole it. On Monday he came with ah, he was makdish the animal to base mikdash. And on Tuesday, the original owner said oy vavoy. So if he was makdishit when the person was still searching for it, the big the original he had the balim, then Lamalikon, why do you need a posuk? Pshita, of course. Because he cannot be makdish, as I told you. Say thank you to Akiva. <laughs> a person, the Ganav, cannot be makdish something that completely is not his. When the person is still searching, nothing really happened. The Ganav is Bechlal and an owner. Of course, the Akdish just ain't working. Bechlal. I don't need a postage for that. I have another postage for that. Ishki Akdish is based on that's besides. El Olav, Ah, must be what? Must be what? There really, on Sunday, there was a step. Monday, the person was me, I show you, yo, yo. oh, and now we say what? And now the person on Tuesday is Makdish, and we say the Hekdish is not working. Why is the Hekdish not working? You know why? Shmami not Yush Loikani. In other words, Abai wants to say that the reason the Torah says that the Korban is not, is not applicable, it's not a kosher Korban, is precisely because even there was already Yush before you Makdish it, the Hekdish doesn't work because Yush is not koiner. It's not that the Torah is telling me, like I thought originally, it's not hasnished. It's not nice to bring your korban to base Amikdash. No, the idea is it's just not your korban. That's a Torah's way of telling me that the Yush that preceded the Hekdish is not working. And the Hekdish, you just can't be Makdish someone else's animal, even after Yush. And that's why it doesn't go to base Amikdash. It's just not Kodosh. So you see, the Yush is not koiner. No, Rove is now retorting, answering back. Excuse me, Abaye. According to you, how do you explain the following Brisa? It says in the Brisa, It says, Mishkav Zav. A person, let's say, Zav is some kind of tumor coming out of his body, yeah, from his aver. And now the Mishkav that he lies on is Tome. He lies on a bed, on a mattress, and 10 mattresses, they're all Tome. But let's say somebody steals a Mishkav. Let's say someone stole someone's mattress. It's a dorm, it's jail. I don't know what to call him yet. He stole someone's mattress and he was metame it. He's not metame. You cannot be metame something that's illegally not yours. Yeah, yeah, unbelievable kiddush. Yeah, the person is a zav, the, the ganav. He stole the mattress from the legal owner. 
now he is actually lying on it and he's a zav, doesn't get that level of tumor for whichever reason. Echidami, exactly how is that case? You please explain this to me, Abaye. Ilem the gozel Amra, if he stole some wool, the Amra is wool, the Avde Mishkav, he turned it into a mattress. Mika Lamanda Mashinu in Maiseloitani. Ah, you're telling me that all the theft stories in the Torah, it's not kosher, it's not Tome. You want to tell me, it comes to show me that, kin, that, that a Shinu is not a Shinu. How can you say that? If somebody stole, and this is what I told you all the time, the most classical example nobody argues on is if I took something physical, wool, and made it into a whole new beautiful piece, or ugly. <laughs> I made it into a whole new mattress. I made it into a chair that everyone agrees that it's a Kenyan. Is there anybody in the world that knows Shinu Maise is Loikani? Oh, how come? So how can you tell me that a person who stole a mattress is not metame? Well, the obvious answer is he stole a ready-made mattress. He stole a mattress. That mattress, but there's no shino, no shmino, no nothing. And if the mattress still belongs to the original owner because it's pre-shinui, the Torah says, hey, mister, you're not allowed, so to speak, the matama. Your tuba doesn't apply to it. You're not the owner. The goes on carbon the chavre. Same answer I'm going to say over here. He did not steal an animal that was choil and the ganav was makdashit. He stole a ready made korban. I have to bring an oil to base a mikdash, let's say. I have to bring a chatas. The guy's Machal Shabbos Shoigeg has to bring a chatas. And he overheard his neighbor next door saying, This animal of mine is for chatas. Oh, Shem loves me. Look, I'm going to take his chatas. Which he already dedicated to Beis Hamikdash, Chatos. I'll steal his Chatos and bring it to Hashem. Isn't that a nice solution? Says the Torah, no. An animal which was already being Mukdash, I don't have to be Magdish. It's been Mukdash already. Maybe you can bring it to Beis Hamikdash because, of course, the Ekdash applies because the Ekdash was done by the original legal, legal, legal owner. Maybe you can now take the ready-made korban and bring it to Beis Hamikdash. Beside the Ekdash is kosher. It's been Mukdash already before it came to my hands. Says the Torah, no, it's ugly. Kosher of al Masriach doesn't work because Lamaisa, you're a thief. You can't bring stolen stuff to Hashem's house. But Lamaisa, Rabbi came out clean. Rabbi came out good. So Rabbi would still stick to his guns. He used his koine, providing that the gun wants to be koine, as opposed to Pesach. And he used his koine according to Rabbi. By the way, Allah is not like Rabbi. Allah Lamaisa, oh, I'm really, really jumping the gun because I'm being nice to you. And it says, La Aloha, Yush is only coined with some Shinuim. Yush alone is not coined, like Rabbi says. Yush is sometimes coined together with certain Shinuim. That will be discussed later. I'm just giving you a little bit of a, to, uh, to uh, appease you. We're in the two dots. Tomorrow, Mitzvah Hashem, remember the two dots. Thank you very, very much for listening and being with us in this year. God will